today's video is going to be five things I maybe change about the renovations that we did. If I could go back in time, not renovate in the way that we renovated them. So maybe if you're somebody who has a house that you're thinking about renovating that someday will be a rental property, learn from my mistakes. You know, Jordan and I were first time homeowners when we bought our house. I was like, Pinterest obsessed. I got on Pinterest and I made like mood boards for every single room exactly how I wanted them to look and made some upgrades that were just really good for us, but maybe not great for a rental. If I had known that we would be renting this out, I would probably change these things. The new renters moving in on Monday. So I need to go and just make sure that everything's like in order. I'm just gonna go to the Burian house. I'm gonna put up these like, I have these printouts that I like put on the fridge as like reminders of when trash day is and the Wi-Fi password and all of that. So I'm just gonna go add all of that stuff. Um, and then on the way, I'm actually gonna stop in at Costco. They have this like therapy gun that you can use on your sore muscles and so jordan really wants one of those so i'm gonna pick that up anyways i i'm gonna head out to burian get this house all set up let's go oh my god i just got to costco and it's so busy it's gonna be um interesting but while i run into costco um, I wanted to share the first thing that I would have maybe considered doing differently in our rental, not putting a clawfoot tub in the bathroom. This is the before and this is somehow the only image I have of it, but it was a functioning bathroom. It was totally fine. It was just really small and not really my style. So I was definitely excited to get in there and redo it. This is just an image of the subfloor when Jordan ripped it up to redo that. So my favorite part of any project is making a mood board and I pulled in all these images from Pinterest. I'd always been obsessed with the idea of having a clawfoot tub so I was really set on that and then I also thought it'd be neat to do penny tiles, maybe a word in the tile. I was also drawn to the idea of having a set of lockers in the bathroom. I also wanted to incorporate another material like cedar to give kind of a sauna like feel. So here's the after and I'm actually just really, I love the way that this turned out. However, for a rental, there's a few things I would change. Instead of a bathtub, I would opt for one of these walk-in showers. It's going to be a lot easier to clean. You're not having to use a fabric shower curtain and it's less of a liability because it's easier to step in and out of. However, if a bathtub was a necessity, I would opt for one of these more traditional size bathtubs over a clawfoot and just kind of tile the front of it to make it look nice, but still use a panel in place of a shower curtain. Um, and then for the glass, Glass panel, I would opt for something like this um, corrugated or textured glass to give it more of a modern look instead of the window pane look that was really popular a few years back. My advice would be to not do a clawfoot tub unless you have space to put just a clawfoot tub and then a standalone walk-in shower, which we did not have in this 860 square foot house. Just got out of Costco. I hope you enjoyed the bathroom before and after, but I got this. Oh my gosh, sharper image, deep tissue massager. The floor in the bathroom was actually rotted. So Jordan wanted to redo the floor completely so that the tub had a pretty steady foundation to sit on. Um, so he actually ripped out the entire bathroom floor and redid the subfloor in there and then tiled it. Now I'm gonna head over to Nordstrom. I have two shirts and a pair of shorts that I wanna return that I had bought in multiple sizes and just never got around to returning them. So I'm gonna go do that. And then I will share the next, um, actually, how about I share the next thing I'll show, I'll show you and you can watch that while I drive over to Nordstrom. The next thing that I would change, not doing subway tile in the kitchen all the way from the countertop to the ceiling. There was an image, I'm pretty sure it was like Joanna Gaines had redone a kitchen and it was like subway tile and it said like farm fresh or something in the kitchen above this like really cool farmhouse sink. I think we would have saved a lot of money if we had just done a backsplash that was from the countertop to the first shelf. 
There's also something I really like about the tile above that pink oven. I think this is a kitchen by Leanne Ford or it is her kitchen, I'm not sure, but I really love that. And then also this kind of peachy pink tile that goes all the way to the ceiling in this kind of eclectic kitchen. So maybe if I could go back, I would pick like a fun color to do in the kitchen and not just the plain white, but I would definitely keep it to just the lower half or just going up to that first shelf. Although I do love that image. So here's a picture of the kitchen before we renovated it and during renovations, it got pretty messy. And this was really cool because we got to use the sink from our first apartment in Seattle where we lived. They renovated the kitchen when we moved out and gave us the sink. So we repurposed that and put it in our kitchen remodel. made it to Nordstrom and I'm gonna go run in and do my two returns that I have but I thought before I would just share the third thing that I would change so the third thing that I would change is I would not buy impractical furniture pieces and by that I mean um, like we got a cream colored couch so it's not very forgiving when it comes to getting dirty. I got a free piano because we were all stuck at home and people were giving away pianos left and right on Craigslist so I was like I'll take a piano. We don't need a piano. Um, those are extremely heavy and difficult to move. So yeah, our rental has a piano and it's like shoved up against the wall in one of the guest rooms. And it's like so impractical to have in there and it takes up space and we can't move it because it's like, it's huge, it's heavy. And it's basically like built into the room because we had to remove a little strip of molding from around the door to actually fit it in the room. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get impractical pieces. The other impractical piece that I got was this massive metal desk and I love it. I loved working at it, but it's another scenario where we brought the desk home and basically like built it into the room. Um, so we can't, we can't get it out unless we were to like cut a hole in the wall and remove it that way. So the third room is completely useless for the rental unless we have somebody who wants to also work remote and needs a home office. It's great for that. But I've had several people reach out and ask like, oh, can you fit like an air mattress in that um, office bedroom on the floor? And no, you can't. It's a very small room. It's the room that we actually took um, square footage from to make the bathroom larger. Okay, I just got done in Nordstrom. My fourth tip, don't cut corners when it comes to upgrading the heating and cooling in your home. The house came with a gas furnace when we moved in. It was like a, oh, it was just this monster. We called it the dragon because it was so loud. It was a gas furnace and that's what was used to heat the entire house. Um, I hated the look of it. We thought it was gonna catch on fire. It was just like a piece of junk. So what we did was to save money, we looked on Craigslist for a replacement, something that we could use um, to heat the home. And most homes in Washington don't have cooling, like air conditioning. So we weren't really looking for air conditioning at that time. Um, although that was something we wanted to do in the future, we just, it wasn't something that we were thinking about. We found this free gas fireplace on Craigslist and we went and picked it up and it was cute. It's, I mean, I think it, it looks cute in the house. It's black and Jordan installed it and it was definitely an upgrade from the dragon furnace that was in the home already. I think just, it, it was still kind of a fire hazard. We didn't really want to have a gas fireplace where like we were really conscious of like when it was on and off but we didn't want to have to worry about people who are renting the home um so we ended up just capped the line um the gas cannot be turned back on that also eliminated the gas bill so we no longer have to worry about that um but if i could go back in time i would have invested in the electric heating and cooling unit that Jordan installed. It's a mini split. 
and it just goes up on the wall and it's, it provides air conditioning and heating to the whole house. And if I could go back in time, I would have just done that immediately because we suffered through some very hot summers in that house and it would have been great to have air conditioning. I have one more errand to run and then I'm actually losing daylight. I wanted to film some of the footage at the house when I get there, but daylight savings time. I'm gonna just go run my last errand. I have to go to Target and then I will head to the house and share my last tip. So let's go. All right, I made it to the Burian house. Okay, so the fifth thing that I would do differently would be this is just from my husband and i's experience um being first time homeowners us renting out our home for the first time we didn't know that we'd be renting our home out we refinanced into a 15-year loan disclaimer i am not a financial advisor i am not somebody you should be taking um, finance advice from but all i can do is share my experience with you fast forward to now we are paying a very high mortgage for a very small home that we don't live in and we're renting out so we're really not making a lot of income on this property we are mostly just renting it out and covering the mortgage with the rent payment and that's great i'm not complaining but if we had been in a 30-year mortgage at the low interest rate that we got in 2020 then we would actually be making an income on this property and because we're in the 15 year we don't really profit anything on this like once it's paid off then we'll obviously be making an income from it um but I don't know. I kind of just feel like if we were in a 30 year mortgage that our mortgage payment would be a lot lower. It's, it's kind of a regret and also kind of not a regret. So maybe that one doesn't fit into this video very well, but um, yeah, I think I would just think about it a little bit more. <laughs> so those are my five. I don't want to call them regrets because I actually really love this home. I love all the renovations we made. Well, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. I really do feel fortunate to have been able to buy a house and to be able to rent it out. We wouldn't be able to rent it out without Jordan's job. Obviously, we would still be living here if we weren't living at the hatchery. So that is just a huge benefit that um, has been such a great opportunity for us. So yeah, those are my... <laughs> Those are my five things I would change that are not regrets and not complaints, but just lessons learned. Just hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoy this type of content and if you want me to keep making rental videos. At this point, I'm rambling. I don't know what else to say, but thank you so much for watching. Sure.